Hi, in this episode I'm going to introduce you to Substack's Browserify module. NPM is huge, it's a treasure trove of useful JavaScript modules, but traditionally we've thought of it as modules for the server side. That's where Browserify comes in, it allows you to use the exact same module syntax that you would use in a server side node app, but in the browser. This is made possible with the compilation step that happens on the server, where the Browserify module traverses your files, figures out the dependencies and concatenates it into one file that contains everything that it needs. This file can be run in the browser. This is a game changer. Man, I love it. I wish I understood it earlier. Okay, let's start. I've dropped into an empty folder in Terminal. Let's install Browserify globally with npm. Cool. Browserify is an npm module and we want to use it to pull in other modules to the browser. So let's run npm init to create our package JSON file. We're not going to publish this, so we just use all the defaults. Okay, sweet. We want to pull in Lodash and jQuery with npm. So now we've got a pretty standard folder with jQuery and Lodash modules installed. First we create a file called bundle.js. This file can be called anything, it doesn't matter. This is going to contain our code and also tell Browserify that we want to pull in the node modules. Now we create an HTML file to illustrate how we can pull these npm modules into the browser. Browserify uses file combination to pull in modules, and I want the combined file to be dropped into a dist folder. So we create a dist folder quickly. And in our HTML file, we reference a bundle.js file from this folder, although it won't exist yet. But that's fine for now. In our bundle.js file, we require Lodash exactly like you're used to with Node. We do the same for jQuery. I'm wrapping an array containing a bunch of numbers with Lodash. Now we call unique on it to remove all the duplicates. We end the Lodash chain by using the each function to loop through each of the numbers. Now we log them to the console. In later episodes, we'll have a better setup. But for now, we'll just run a simple HTTP server using this Python command. When we hit it up in the browser, we see that it's trying to find the bundle.js file in the dist folder, which of course doesn't exist yet. This is where Browserify comes in. We need to create a JS file that the browser can consume, based on the bundle.js file in the root folder. When we run Browserify without any parameters, we can see that it has some easy to understand options. We are interested in the output parameter for this episode. We run Browserify specifying the bundle.js file as input, and dist forward slash bundle.js as the output. In our editor, we can see that it generated the bundle.js file in the dist folder. You can see that it wrapped our code with a context that translates the requires into code that executes correctly. It plonked our dependencies into the file after this context. As you can see, at the top we've got jQuery code, and right here at the bottom we've got Lodash code. Now when we hit it up in the browser, we see the unique numbers being logged to the console. To illustrate that it pulled jQuery in, we create an unordered list in the HTML file which we can target with jQuery in order to append elements to it based on our unique list. In our Lodash each callback, we append a list item to the list with jQuery. Now remember, we had to run a command to compile the file previously, and we've got to do it again. In a later episode, we'll see how we can automate this part. 
Now when we head it up in the browser, you can see the list being populated with jQuery. And that folks, is Browserify at its simplest level. Browserify is extremely cool, I love it and you should too. In upcoming episodes, we're gonna have a look at better ways to introduce it to your workflow. See you next time.